coming right there. All right, hey guys, this video is brought to you by Global Ordnance. Your best defense against ammo shortages, Global Ordnance has got ammo in stock. So whether it's ammo, optics, guns like this Strybog 9mm subgun or that Radical NK1 Bullpup 12-gauge semi-auto, Global Ordnance has got you covered. Oh, hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. I, you know my opinions on red dots on pistols. I honestly believe that within the next five years, all combat pistols will have optics on them. I'm sincere when I say that. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't like them. It's hard to find the dot, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, you know, I heard the exact same thing, because remember, I'm old. I'm an old SF guy, retired. I remember the same thing when red dots first showed up for our M4s. The old timers uh, were like, uh, optics break, batteries go dead. They wanted to just stick with iron sights. Iron sights are great, I got that. But there's a reason why today everybody runs red dots on their rifles. It's so much more efficient, faster, everything. And that's important in combat. Uh, likewise, guys, it is literally the exact same thing with a pistol. Now, um, before we go any further, I wanna make sure to thank Global Ordnance for sponsoring the ammo for this video. They hooked us up with some ammo so that we could do some t uh, training and uh, tests on all these different optics so that we could bring you guys quality content. So uh, be sure to check out Global Ordnance. All right, now there are cons to Red dots, uh, a lot of people will say, I tried a red dot, but it is slower. I can't find the dot, I can't find the dot. I present the gun the way I always do, and I can't find the dot, can't find the dot. I hear that over and over and over again. Okay, I, I got that, right? Um, but there are benefits that outweigh this that will force you to put in the extra time to uh, adjust that muscle memory so you can find the dot. The number one, uh, and some people will say accuracy and this and low light, and I, the number one uh, advantage of running a red dot is where you keep your focal plane. Now what I mean by that is again, iron sights, right? Um, when you present that firearm, you, you, uh, you have focus on that paper target, right? You're in that competition, whatever, and as you present, you line up that sight picture, front sight lined up with the rear sight, and that's where you keep your focus. You'll hear people say the catch term is front sight, front sight, front sight. They always want you to focus on the front sight. The front sight should be crystal clear, the rear sight perfectly lined up with it, but slightly out of focus, and then your target is even more out of focus because your eye can only focus on one focal plane at a time. You can't read right here while still focus on letters that are at the other side of the room. If you focus on the letters across the room, you can't focus on things that are right here at the same time. You have a set focal plane for your eyes, you, and you can vary it, but you can only do one distance at a time. So for Shooting pistols, everybody says you need to keep that focal plane, that point of maximum crispness, right where that front sight is. That's where I need to be focused, right there. And if you do that, if you have that perfect sight picture with iron sights, you can then drive it from blurry paper target to blurry paper target to blurry paper target, and you'll get hits, because if you're anywhere on that blurry target, if the iron sights are perfectly aligned, you're gonna get hits on that target. That's how it works. The problem with that is now let's look at combat shooting, right? Uh, because not only do I need to be able to put it, the perfect sight picture on that target, I need to be able to identify, is it a threat, is it not a threat, but is it a threat that warrants deadly force? Okay, it is, it has met that requirement. Okay, perfect. But I still need to be able to follow through. So I have my focal plane perfect sight picture. I pull the trigger. I now need to move my focal plane to the target. 
did I get the desired effect? Because if I didn't, I need to send more love, in which case I need to move the focal plane back to the site. Pull the trigger again, now I need to move that focal plane back to the target. Now, you can do that. It takes a lot of practice, but your eye physically is capable of moving that focal plane back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You can master combat shooting with iron sights. People have done it for decades. They have. It works. Now let's throw in fight or flight, because there's a lot of people, there are a lot of uh, schools of thought out there that, well, you don't use sights uh, in a real gunfight because you're too scared. Now, uh, almost all professional instructors will disagree with that. You have to fight through it, but you can move that focal plane back to the target. But it's very, very hard to do, and it takes a lot of training to do that. Now, and what they're talking about is when you're scared, when you're really scared, you're not going to be able to take your eyes off of that bad guy. You're not going to be able to take your eyes off of that bad guy. So in other words, your focal plane is going to stay on the bad guy. So now when I present that gun with my iron sight, I'm supposed to be focusing on my front sight, but I'm in fight or flight. I'm focusing on him. Instead of the target being blurry, my sights are a little bit blurry. I'm still able to get hits because I have so much muscle memory presenting that firearm in training, so that in fight or flight, if I keep that focal plane there, I'm still able to get hits because my sights are blurry. It works, it has worked for decades. Now, so fast forward to iron sights, I mean to red dots, just like with a rifle, what we found is entering into that room doing close quarters battle, as I come into that room, wherever I see that threat, I can keep my focus on that guy, and as I bring that weapon up, my red dot, Parallax free uh, weapon sight, it's, I, I see that red dot on that focal plane that the bad guy's on. I'm not having to move my focal plane. I bring the red dot up to where I'm already looking, roll through the trigger, the sear breaks, and my bullet mixes metal and meat together. Same thing with a pistol. So now, as I'm presenting, I'm still able to focus on that bad guy. Because the reality is when you're in fight or flight, you're going to be scared to death. You're not going to be able to take the guy, your, your eyes off of him. You're not. You're going to have to be able to present that firearm. And as soon as that red dot superimposes over where, you, uh, where that intended bullet wants to go, you roll through the trigger. So that right there, guys, hands down, if you get a red dot optic on your pistol for no other reason, I'm not saying it's going to make you faster in a IPSC competition. I'm not saying it's going to make you more accurate when you're out deer hunting. But if you get it for one reason, one reason alone, for combat shooting, being able to maintain that focal plane with the threat, uh, that alone, guys, that is why you're going to see red dots on all combat pistols within the next few years, guaranteed. Now, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned the con that it is slower to shoot that, uh, that pistol with that red dot on it. It's slower. It's slower for new shooters, and, and here's why. When you present with that uh, pistol, how you've been presenting forever, you focus on the target, you initiate that draw, you bring it up, and as you're pressing the gun out, you're, you acquire that front sight post first, and as you present the gun out, the rear sight comes up behind it, it lines up, and you're already 80% on the trigger. Once you've got that adequate sight picture to get an acceptable hit, you pull that last 10, 20% of the trigger, the gun goes off. Bang, bang, bang. Works fine. Now, when you switch to a red dot sight, because all my muscle memory has been for the front sight post coming up into my field of view first, followed by this uh, rear sight post. When you switch to using a red dot, you do not see that red dot until both sights are perfectly aligned. So everybody's trying to, they're so used to catching that front sight post while it's low in their field of view coming up, you can't see the red dot at all until that, until that firearm is, is at full presentation, all right? Now, so how do you do this? You have to modify your muscle memory. Now, it takes, uh, and. and I don't come up with the numbers, right? Uh, they've done studies and stuff. It takes three to 5,000 repetitions to build muscle memory, okay? 
um, your draw. Your draw, you've done three to 5,000 repetitions with it. You have a nice smooth draw. It's fast, it works for you. Now I'm asking you to change it. Now that doesn't mean three to 5,000 more repetitions. I, I wish it was that easy. To rewrite, to change muscle memory, think of it as a, because your brain's basically a hard drive, but think of it as a, like a dry eraser board, except you're not allowed to erase it. So where you've written, uh, I will not hit guys in class. I will not hit guys in class. I will not hit guys in class. You have to write over that on that dry eraser board so many times that you cannot read that first message anymore. So instead of it being three to 5,000 repetitions, it takes seven to 9,000 repetitions, almost twice as much for you to modify uh, that original muscle memory. And uh, so in other words, you've gotta be willing to put in that time. Now I'm not saying you need to go buy seven to 9,000 rounds of nine millimeter just to change your draw. No, all of this presentation can be done with that gun dry firing, literally from the holster, just like you did, press it out and you get that dot lined up, you're all set over and over and over again. What you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna end up modifying your current draw so that you have a different presentation. That's the same thing you have to do if you change weapon systems that have a different grip angle. Let's say you're going from a SIG to a Glock or a Glock to a 1911. I don't know why somebody would do that. All right? But uh, you change grip angles, you have to modify that muscle memory also. <laughs>that well it's slower I can't find my dot that's on you you need to instead of just putting that red dot back down and saying well th this is a uh, I can't do it it's not for me I'm gonna stick with iron sight okay you can do that you can be that old guy back in the 90s that didn't want to put a red dot on his firearm you can be that guy but I challenge you to do the right thing invest the time and modify your muscle memory so that you can use that red dot optic, right? Um, all it takes is practice, and you'll find that your draw is gonna be just as fast. Nothing has changed, right? You're faster with a red dot on your rifle than you are with iron sights. You're gonna find that you're gonna do the same thing with your pistol if you're willing to invest the time. Now, there are different reticles. Uh, Pete went over the different reticles and stuff and why different ones are which. We have other videos here on Tactical Rifleman uh, dealing with red dots. We've got more coming in the future, night shooting, all that stuff. Um, but basically, when you start looking at the different reticles, um, whether you're running an RMR, SROs, a there's a dozen different makers of pistol optics. But for the most part, when you look at them, they will give you options of what reticle you want. Do you want a small dot? Do you want a big dot? Now, people will tell you for... Um, close in CQB work, you want a bigger dot, um, and some of them go to like 12 MOAs, big monster dots, for CQB distances because it allows you to find the dot faster. Remember, that's the hardest part with a red dot optic on a pistol, finding that dot. Now, once you get used to finding your dot, you'll find almost everyone will want to go to a very small dot because that gives you accuracy at distance. If you've got that small target way out there at 50 meters and you're putting a big dot over the top, you can't see that target anymore. But if all you've got is a little one MOA dot, you can easily still put it on that 50 meter steel plate. You're still getting hits. You've got a more definitive point of aim, right? So big dot versus small dots. Now, um, there are, uh, for example, a couple of different optics. Uh, they will, uh, you can get a circle with a dot in the middle, small dot in the middle, kind of like the uh, circle of death in the EOTech. Uh, you guys know I love the EOTech and my AR. All right, um, this is not an EOTech. This is a uh, SIG. I'm testing for SIG. Uh, you guys know I love my EOTech. The big circle allows me to acquire it fast when I need that precise well, uh, well aimed shot, that low percentage headshot, let's say, I have that very small definitive dot in the middle. All right, so a lot of companies have actually done that with their pistol optics. Holosun, for example, you can get the circle 
with the small dot in the middle. The big circle allows you to acquire the dot faster, press it to the center of the chest, roll through the trigger. But in the case that you have a uh, longer range target, you've still got that small aiming point in the middle. Okay, a lot of guys will actually, if, if all you have is a small dot, a lot of guys will run it overly bright and that gives them a, a blooming small dot that looks large. A lot of guys will run that. Some companies also have what's called a chevron. It'll be a, uh, a basically an upside down V, a chevron. All right. Now, the advantage of the chevron, I've heard a lot of people say they don't like it. Here's the deal. Um, height over bore, right? Remember, close in, I, I need to aim a little bit high, height over bore. Now, I understand height over bore is not very high on a pistol, but it's still, you still have height over bore, you do. So close in, you're aiming with the whole chevron, the middle of the chevron, and that's gonna actually put the tip of that chevron a little high on your target, and works height over bore. But the, the true advantage of the chevron is when you're shooting those long distance targets, uh, uh, 50 meters, 100 meters, 130 meters, yes, with, with my, uh, my, my hole of sun with the chevron in it, I, I, I can hit steel at 130. Right? Now, uh, my range only goes out to 130. Top, very tip gives you a very small definitive aiming point. So uh, different, different reticles for you to look at uh, when you're looking to buy that, that uh, pistol optic for your pistol. Now, there's one other thing that is very, very important, and you're gonna see combat optics in the future for pistols going in one way and only one way, uh, period. Now, um, I'll use this one right here. All right, uh, this, is a, this is a Holosun, all right? Uh, but what it has, just like the Trigicon RMR, just like the Trigicon SRO, all right? Big piece of glass. What they have right here is an exposed emitter. What I mean by that is where the light actually comes out is right here. It's not inside the glass, like on a, like inside an aim point or like inside this uh, Sig Romeo 8. The, the emitter, the projector of the light is actually between these panes of glass. Even on an EOTech, as narrow as that is, that light is prismed up inside. It, it is not exposed to the elements at all. Here's why that's important. If you're just a competition shooter, all right, um, no big deal, no big deal. However, remember, I'm talking combat shooting now. Combat shooting, I go to present this gun up, you can get, one little water droplet come down and hit that emitter. Now, if you get water on your lens, your front lens, you can wipe it off. If you get water on your back lens, you can reach in there and you can wipe it off. But if you get a water droplet come down and land on that emitter, you can't wipe it out. Your fingertip cannot get in there. Now, you're in the middle of a gunfight saying, excuse me, Mr. Bad Guy, we hold on for a second. I got to dig a Q-tip out of my cleaning kit, or I gotta use the corner of my t-shirt to get in there, all right? Now, <clears throat> yes, there are guys that will say, well, you can shake the, uh, you can shake the optic and shake that, uh, that water droplet out of there. Okay, I, I wanna see guys add that to their time on the pro timer. I want you to see, I wanna see guys ask the bad guy, hold on for a second while I try to get the water off of my emitter. Now, um, you get in the mud, it's even worse, right? Uh, yeah, you can wipe mud off your glass, you can. You get mud in there, now wh why would you get mud in there? Combat operations, right? Uh, rolling around in the mud, tripping, getting off the helicopter, uh, the rotor dust, kicking up all that dust. You look like a sugar cookie by the time that helicopter flies off. All that dust landing in that little slot right there. Remember, your pistol is sitting like this, and as soon as you go to present, all that crap's gonna fly right back to that emitter and land right there. Now, um, so in case you hadn't figured this out yet, I'm not real big on exposed emitters. You get snow in there, anything, you're not gonna get it out, guys. You're, you're just not gonna be able to clear it out, right? Uh, so that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. Here's where I saw that. Remember, I'm, I'm old, so you go back to some of our original 
red dots on our pistols, our old Seymours, things like that, the old original reflex sights, they had exposed emitters. We got away from them and we went to enclose the emitters because guys were no joke having problems with uh, getting rain, getting mud, getting dust. It's a legitimate gripe. It really is a legitimate gripe. Opposite corner. All right, so just like we did with rifles, we went to an enclosed emitter. Uh, there's a couple of companies out there that have enclosed emitters on pistols now. First, the standard. Everybody loves Aimpoint, right? This is called the Aimpoint ACRO, uh, also known as the mailbox. It's big, it's ugly, I got that, but it is, in, it is an enclosed emitter. It's got glass in the back. There's no way snow is getting on this thing. There's not, there's just not. Now, uh, Holosun also has an option, uh, slightly smaller, actually quite a bit smaller, uh, that I run on one of my pistols. It is, it's enclosed, the emitter is not exposed. You can dunk this in water, you can have rain on it, you can have snow, mud, whatever, it's not gonna get on the emitter. Now, I wanna caution people about just buying the ones that have lids over the top of them. Uh, SIG has one, for example, that I, I was excited about because it looked like this. It was enclosed until I realized it was nothing more than a uh, exposed emitter that had a cap over the top of it. That is fine for EDC, that is fine for things like that. It's not fine for the military. Uh, think of SEALs locking out of submarines or stuff like that. Uh, water, pressured water is gonna get up inside that thing. Now he comes up out of the swimming pool, for example. That water is just not gonna drain. So try to stay, if you're gonna invest the money on a enclosed emitter, get one that's sealed, not unsealed. Right? Uh, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Now, Accuracy, just like with a rifle, red dots, what, what red dots allow you to do is they allow you to quickly get that dot on target and get rounds on because you're not having to waste the time lining up those iron sights. It's, it's taking that one extra step out of it. It's making you faster. Likewise, with that pistol, when you present that pistol out, right, uh, you don't have to worry about lining up those sights. But the other thing it does is for long range shooting at distance, it's very, very accurate, guys, very, very accurate. Uh, if you can hit steel at 50 meters, you're gonna find that you're gonna be able to hit at 70 or 80 meters. If you can hit steel at 100 meters with iron sights, you're gonna see, you're gonna be able to get 120, 130 with it. It really does, it's gonna give you, and there's a couple other, uh, tricks to it to uh, do better alignment. I actually sit my front sight post right below the, uh, the opening of my chevron and uh, it tends to remove a little bit of the parallax for me. So there are things. Now, uh, another thing you guys need to consider is for night shooting, but we're, I'm gonna save that for another video. We're gonna do a whole nother video just on night shooting that you can find in our video archive. Night shooting with red dots, right? Now, <clears throat> Battery life, not all batteries are created equal. The Gen 1 of the ACRO was insanely um, energy inefficient. It took a lot of battery power to run this thing and the batteries just didn't last very long. The Gen 2 has a much better battery life. Now when you read the, um, when you read the boxes they'll tell you, well, this one's got 5,000 battery hours. Yeah, that's 5,000 battery hours on like brightness three or four. Uh, the reality is, is that's too dim for most everyday shooting, all right? It, it's just not, um, it's not realistic. If they tell you 5,000 hours on setting three or four and you need to keep yours on seven or eight, guys, you can get by with uh, a year. You can get by with 1,000 hours instead of 5,000 hours. You can. Mark your calendar. Put, a, put a, a digital mark on your digital calendar, right, to do once a year, twice a year, swap the battery in your pistol, right? Uh, now, there are some like this Holosun. It's actually got a little solar panel on the top, right? Um, 
There are some that have auto off, so you don't have to mess with it, and then shake awake. Uh, as soon as you move it, it automatically turns on. People think that's the great, latest and greatest because if, well, my thing's gonna last for 5,000 hours and I'm not really using it, man, it sh man I'm good. Those 5,000 hours don't ever start. That, that's not true. Me carrying it as my EDC pistol, that dot is being shook awake all day long. Me riding with that optic bouncing in my Jeep, doesn't matter if it's in a gun case in the back, it's bouncing, it's being shook awake and that dot is turned on. So shake awake is great for home defense guns for that shorty AR you've got uh, in the master bedroom closet. It's great, it'll automatically turn that red, red dot on to where you left it. But I don't want you to rely upon it for your pistol optics. Set your pistol optic where it needs to be and uh, don't worry about battery life, mark your calendar, and uh, report them, uh, re replace them when necessary. Wow, I'm having a hard time finding that dot. <clears throat> now, I mentioned uh, the, the one big con everybody has is I can't find my dot. I can't find my dot, Carol, I can't find my dot. All my other red dot shooters out there will say, <clears throat> that's bullshit, once you've changed your muscle memory, you're good to go, you're good to go, and, and you are, all right? You are good to go, all right? You are perfectly fine on a flat range. Uh, what you will find is when you're shooting odd shooting positions, um, for example, around barricades, uh, through small fire ports, under vehicles, things like that, it, you're not going to be square presenting that firearm, and you will have a hard time finding that dot. That's why I'm excited about, and you'll notice I run it on my pistol, uh, Chad has it on his pistol. What this is, is, uh, and it's the, the optic itself is made by Holosun, but when you look at it, it'll say Holosun with ACSS reticle. These have the ACSS Vulcan reticle in it. Now, what it is, is basically it has the chevron for long distance shooting, but it also has a circle. Now, not a small circle with a dot like an EOTech. It's not the donut of death. All right, it is the small chevron, that's all you see in your field of view when you're at full presentation. You don't see the circle at all. However, if as you present the firearm, it's canted left, right, up, or down, you'll see the edge of that circle. The circle is just outside your field of view. And when the pistol's wrong, you'll see the edge of that circle. Wherever the edge of the circle is, that's the direction to move the front of your gun. If it's over here, you move it that way. If, if you see in the bottom, you drop the front of the gun. If you see the top, you raise the front of the gun. And what you'll see is as you raise that circle, that chevron will come right up into your field of view. All right, so if you're a new shooter, you haven't bought that red dot optic yet, uh, it's called the ACSS Vulcan Reticle. Right now, it's only available with Holosun. I pray that Aimpoint puts it inside the ACRO. I love the ACRO. It's an enclosed, I love it. I pray that Trigicon puts it in their RMR. I pray they put it in their SRO. This is a great optic for competition, but shooting around barricades, things like that, you still do lose the dot. So, uh, and with the, that reticle is not restricted just to Holosun. Just like me getting the Horse Vision H59 reticle in my Smitten Bender scope or in my Leopold scope or in my Night Force scope, those companies have to pay royalties. But uh, anyways, to me, it's a cat's meow. That's the reticle that I like. That's what I'm running on my guns. Guys, it's literally ACSS Vulcan is the reticle I'm running on this thing right here. 
<coughs> so anyways, guys, in conclusion, we got gunfire here. Why? America. We love gunfire. We love shooting our guns. You've been practicing with that pistol forever. You made the commitment to carry that EDC pistol every day, and I encourage you to do that. But if you're going to do that, I want you to train with it. But I also want you to set yourself up for success. Mark my words, within the next few years, you're going to see that every combat pistol out there, starting with the military, then law enforcement, then all of you, they're all going to have red dot optics on them. Guys, literally, uh, it is the way of the future. Now, when you get it, get an enclosed emitter, whether it's the Holo Sun that's enclosed, whether it's the ACRO, but get that enclosed emitter, but get it with the Vulcan reticle or a similar reticle like that. Get something that's going to serve you for decades to come and change those batteries. That's all I got. You guys know the deal. Like, subscribe, and um, click that bell, bell so you get those notifications when we put a new video out. YouTube's going to unclick the bell for you, so you got to check it every once in a while. They don't like us. I can live with that. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.